listeners and subscribers. Hope all is well. Uh, on my way to this wage slave job. You know how it is. Um, you know, it was funny. I was just listening to this news segment this morning. And it's, it's really funny about news, how they essentially, they just create your reality overnight. You know, while you're, while you're dreaming, they come up with the narratives and stuff that they're going to have ready for you when you wake up. And you, you turn on the news or you read your headline, and this is what's happening today. Yet so much stuff is obfuscated. And it's funny, because before this news segment, uh, they, you, don't you love those 90s commercials, right? They played this Kit Kat commercial, and it was such a throwback, you know, the give me a break, give me a break, break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. And it's just, it's funny because that's exactly what I'm thinking when I hear these news stories. I'm like, you got to be giving me a break, <laughs> you know? You've got to, give me a break of that dang old Kit Kat bar. I don't eat that crap, but give me a break, you know? And I also say with, with the same thing with the Pringles, you know, once you pop, the fun don't stop because that's how this stuff is. And I mean, it's just, it's just crazy, everything that's going on. And th just in, in the news alone, you know, so they talk about the drone that was just shot down out in supposedly international waters. You know, Iran uh, shot down our drone. And this is just the latest series of escalations and tensions of what's been going on uh, between the two countries. Right. But uh, America, of course, is positioning itself for war, probably to incite some strategic initiative to usurp power so it can leverage it on the geopolitical scale later all right that's really what we see but i think there's also a lot of esoteric stuff happening on the back end when it comes to these engagements in the middle east i don't think it's about oil and i don't think it's always about um getting some kind of you know campaign out of these folks okay uh it's not always power plays but it's just it's just interesting because what we see happening with uh, Venezuela, Myanmar, uh, Syria, the refugee crisis, basically, and this stuff is happening because of deteriorating diplomatic solutions. Okay, this stuff is being instigated, um, and by, by who? Well, you know, pick your poison. Just just see who you're not allowed to criticize, and you'll find out. You can't say anything about Israel's involvement in some of this stuff. And I'll tell you now, my the least favorite name in news media right now is Mike Pompeo for me. I, I can't believe how any of you folks can take this guy seriously. You know, he talks about how he lies, cheats, and steals. And then he goes on Fox News and says that he's sure that Iran is responsible for the oil tanker incident. So, you know, the oil tanker incident, the, the drone. This is not the first time uh, these kind of tensions have happened. But there's just, there's a lot of stuff being obfuscated on the back. End, and it doesn't seem like we're being told everything. And it, we're definitely not being told everything by these mainstream news media media mouthpieces okay and the thing is is when you begin to hear a mantra from these mainstream news media mouthpiece uh, that means they're getting ready to introduce you to something because they've got to put it in your mind so that uh, when they're ready to debut their narrative you'll be you'll be more easily transitioned into that okay that's what they, they aim to do they aim to get us to respond in a predictable manner so that's why they do this predictive programming the conditioning processes they uh, use and a lot of that the big tool okay is the mainstream media conglomerates all right and if we just see what's happening all around the world i mean i've got this big map you know on my wall and i just look at it, i put post-it notes on it for when things happen and i'm just looking at it from one corner <laughs> to the next i mean even from tiny little new zealand from what they're doing losing their rights and freedoms with their guns they have this gun buyback program you know, all that that shooting that happened out there in Christchurch. okay big big response to that and not only that but when this stuff happens in other countries, America or policymakers, decision makers here, they like to say, well, why don't we use this as a model state or a model nation? They were able to do this. Why can't we do this here? You hear everybody talk about, you know, Australia, right? And again, that's just looking at the map. You look at Australia, North Korea, South Korea, China, Russia, Turkey, Venezuela, Syria, Saudi Arabia. Oh, man, I just like every place there's this these catalyzing events going on or detrimental engagement against the people by the governments or rights and freedoms being clamped down on it's just it's insane and this is what we mean by the new world order this is the new world future that we're in where they implement either esoteric technology uh, nefarious agenda um, pick your poison pick your pleasure they implement this stuff and this is this is, encompasses the future that we're in. The the new world order is part of the new world future, where we see these uh, initiatives from the powers who shouldn't be to try and leverage again more control for themselves and take take power out of our hands. So that's what I was talking about with you know, like the Libra currency and all these 
all these things that we look at, they have nefarious underpinnings on the back end, especially when we're talking about a cashless society. That's just not... <laughs> I say I'm not inherently opposed to something like that because, <clears throat> because if it happened organically or in a way that was amicable, it wouldn't necessarily be something to have to scoff at. But when it's being introduced by the powers that shouldn't be or when we have the system of controllers that we have now, I... I shudder to think the trajectory this stuff can put us on, and I made the parallel yesterday, or in my previous video about the, you know, the facial recognition. That's just one, that's just one avenue that can go down. Okay, you can. That's just one avenue getting fined based on facial recognition within 20 to 30 seconds because now your money, rather than having you know cash or having it stored somewhere, it's in this app where it's easily accessed through the digital ether okay and i think that that is just another modicum of control that these rulers are going to place over us once it gains ubiquity i mean just we're talking about uh mark of the beast type stuff eventually right because if we just look at what's happening with things i mean corporations and businesses alone my wife right uh they phased out passwords at her job and the only way you can log into the computers and get into the building is through this badge this id that has a radio frequency identification chip in it and that is how you log into your computers and that's how you get into your your building at my wife's job and um, other places are adopting this type of technology because once this stuff at first it's just a little novelty convenience right and then once it gains ubiquity they start to force the stuff on you because everybody's basically uh, enough people's doing it where they can introduce a system that sort of keeps track of all this stuff and that's really what we're talking about more more control and um, more control out of our hands more power into theirs and that's where this stuff is going to lead so just like cell phones once they gain you know ubiquity now we're doing this apple pay and we're you have to do all this stuff through your phone. I mean, now, when depending on, on even some banking, you know, you have to, oh, you have to have a phone number and they have to send you this text message to make sure that, you know, this is you or whatever it is. And it's like, it doesn't matter how many security measures they use, my bank account still got hacked, you know. So how safe should I really feel? So th these, kind of, these kind of technologies, it's not about safety, it's not about efficiency, it's not about convenience, it's about control, and it's about introducing this new world order agenda and the new world future where everything is, is tracked and monitored and you, they can leverage your, just like out there in China where they have social credit scores and you can be placed on no-fly lists or you, what, that's the direction we're going, okay? And what what uh, China does through the governments we do through through businesses and corporations and of course we have our secret societies that are just making sure everything goes the way uh, that they want alright doesn't always go perfect but because people aren't engaged in real world scenarios and they just aren't thinking they're just out there bebop and uh, we <laughs> we lose we lose because these people don't know what's going on because they don't care they don't they don't care to get engaged in stuff that's only cursory to look at and you realize, wow, there's really something happening. When, again, when you apply that God-given computer called the brain, but uh, most people, you know, they're just watching TV, they're on social media, they're just bebopping around. They, they don't care. They don't know. So this stuff is just going to, uh, I think that the, this agenda is going to be pulled over on us uh, quite easily, quite easily. It's, it's, it's not going to, there's going to be very little resistance because folks don't even know what to resist against. That's how sad it is. That's the state of affairs we find ourselves in where we know this, this is a slow motion train wreck or this is a sinking ship, yet we're all staying on and we're not doing anything about it. We're not bailing out water. We're not getting ready. The, we're not readying the lifeboats. We're just sitting back and watching the destruction.